Eight Steps to a Successful Day is a way to have a successful day no matter what field that you're in uh, and uh, to be more succe uh, successful as well as more productive every single day. Uh, I even have a grading system on how to uh, judge yourself and grade yourself on how uh, how you did every single day and you can actually rate yourself and uh, it'll take you to the next level. Today I'm not going to talk about that, that'll be in the next video. Um, but this is a great video. I love this one here. This has uh, made me more money than almost uh, any one of the, the classes that I've, I've had. So um, Now the first thing I want to I go over, just the easiest way to remember it, um, just remember it like this. Have, be, be, work, work, maintain, no take. Say that, say that, I'm going to say that three times, so you actually say that yourself three times. Have, be, be, work, work, maintain, no take. Come on, say it with me. Here we go, one more time. Have, be, be, work, work, maintain, no take. Okay, now I'm explaining exactly what this is. I remember my, my original trainer, this is what he did for me, and uh, he kept making me say it, and, and after that, I was the person I can remember it the fastest, okay? So, I love this to death. This is, uh, number one is have a winning attitude, okay? Um, have a winning attitude, it's, uh, you can... Every single day when you wake up, you gotta you gotta have a chance to win. Okay, you wanna you want that will to win. Um, uh, if you're not someone that thinks like that all that much, and uh, you're a little bit down on yourself, one of the things that I would suggest you do is you take yourself a uh, dry erase mark or yeah dry erase marker. You draw a circle in the mirror in your bathroom, and you write I am a winner. So every single day that you have to stare into it, all you're seeing is I am a winner. Um, if you're in the sales field, uh, as far as the have a winning attitude, I want you to. You know, find competition. Now, I, I'm talking about competitions that's a little bit better than you, okay? If you're the best one in the office, I need you to find somebody that, that's better than you in your field, and you need to go after them. So the, the, the easiest way to break this down, first thing I want to do, if I just started an office, you know, if, if we went to a training class and I got, uh, you know, four or five others with us, the first couple days, there's going to be, um, you know, of your, your sales uh, uh, career there, the first couple days, there's going to be one or two guys that are going to come out blazing and they're going to be beating you. That's the guy you need to compete with first, okay? And then, um, you know, and, and if you want, you can have friendly competitions with them, you know, um, you know, short tie Wednesday, stuff like that, you know. So if you if he beats you in a day of sales and you have to wear, you know, a tie that comes up to here or whatnot, you know, and you have a lot of competitions that you could do. But nonetheless, whether it's you're creating a competition with him or you're just kind of, uh, you know, doing it to, you know, to beat him, um, you know, uh, Start, start doing it, and I mean, go after it every single day. So once you actually start beating that person every day, then you go after the next guy above them. And I, personally, I said, just to hold yourself accountable, I tell that person, hey, I'm competing against you, let's roll. And I mean, you know, you guys will have a little bit of talk and competition. Sometimes they'll beat you pretty bad, and you know, and, and you feel, I mean, it, you know, you feel a little bit beat up, but you know, you have to drive. And guess what, though, when you find somebody that's better than you, and you guys are fighting to see who can sell the most, what happens is you tend to make more money. You're more aggressive and. Uh, and you tend to um, you tend to get a little bit farther, a little bit faster. You know, I don't know about you, but myself, I always if I'm going to go to work, I like making a lot of money. The more money, the better. You know, I don't want to be just a mediocre guy, just making enough to get by, and just just doing enough where hey, you know, I'm, I'm just one of the guys. You know, I want to be the best at everything that I do. And I, I not only that, if I'm going to be at work, I want to make sure that I you know I get paid for it. You know, so the more money that you make, the better. This is definitely one way to, to help you take things to the next level. If you're not a salesman, you could also look at it in a different realm. You know, and I know a lot of folks, you know, I, there's two realms of people at work. There's people that, you know, Facebook and they just, you know, they just coast by work, kind of like the uh, the office space, you know, if you've ever seen that uh, that show. I always love that example because the guy's like, I just work hard enough not to get fired and they pay me just enough to, so I don't quit. You know, and um, there's a lot of lot of people like that. You know, what you got to do is you got to find those people that are ambitious at work, and you guys compete and kind of make it a, a a game there. And pretty soon, um, yeah, some, sometimes you might not get noticed forever, but the skills that you'll develop and uh, you know the work ethic that you'll develop, you won't let that lazy nature in and kick your butt because once you get there, it's hard to get out of that realm. You know, so you have to stay in the realm of competitive, aggressive. You know, hard work, and you know, and uh, and go after you know what you believe in. So whether you know, don't worry about what the next guy's doing. Go after the guy that's doing something. You know, birds of a feather flock together. You know, you will end up being more successful in the long run. So have a winning attitude. Compete every day. Find somebody to compete with. Once you and just keep building up, building up, so you are the best one in the office, and you have to go after people in other companies. Figure out what they're doing, and you link up with them, and pretty soon. 
I mean, you become, you know, your goal is to become the best one in the country. I mean, that's a tough task, a tall, tall glass of water to drink, you know, so that's, that's the first step. Number two is be on time. Okay, um, if you're not early, you're late. When you sneak out to, whether it's a business meeting, uh, if you sneak out to a, a function, you know, a, a party, if you're uh, going to meet up with friends, um, try to be early, okay? Try to be five to ten minutes early every single time. I, you know, I, I know it said be on time. You know, five minutes early is on time. You know, and that, that in itself, it's how you do anything, or yeah, how you do anything is how you do everything. I heard that from T. Harv Eker uh, years ago, and um, so you're, you're basically deciding how successful you want to be. A lot of a lot of executives will actually consider it a form of disrespect if you show up late to their meeting, and a lot of times they don't even want to talk to you. When you're in the sales game, if you're showing up late to their meetings, uh, you're like, hey, listen, we're gonna, we got a meeting at 9 o'clock, I'll be there at 9 o'clock, meet you over at the, uh, you know, the, the little shindig down the street, we'll have a bite to eat. You know, you get over there at 9.05 or 9.15, the guy's been sitting there 15 minutes, he's like, are you kidding me? Like, this is the type of guy I want to do business with? I mean, ask yourself this, I mean, do you like waiting? Do you like waiting for other people? You know, um, my dad once told me when I was young, and it stuck with me my entire life, and any time I didn't listen to it, it definitely was a downfall in, in, in the way that I viewed things. He said to me, he said, if you, if you spend time waiting on other people, you'll never get to do the things that you want to do yourself. So, if I, you know, just for instance, I was, uh, you know, I want to sneak out to uh, the Adventure Island um, theme park. It's a water park down in Florida. And, you know, me and my buddies are going to go. There's like... Uh, there's like seven or eight of us going to go. We got uh, five people showed up, and we're waiting on these two people. They said, oh, we're on our way. We're going to be there in just a bit. Next thing you know it, I mean, it's two, three hours later, you know, and they aren't there. And they're like, hey, listen, just, you know, give us a couple more minutes. We're going to be there. And before you know it, I mean, we're, we're looking at, you know, one, two o'clock, and we got an hour and a half drive, and, you know, and it's, it's not even worth going anymore. I wasted I waste an entire day because I'm waiting on somebody. So uh, I don't personally like waiting for other people, and I assume you don't either. So make sure you're not the person people are waiting on. Uh, being on time is going to go ahead and set yourself up for success in the future, okay? Uh, number three is be prepared. Being prepared for every situation. If you're a salesman and you walk into a sale without a pen, for instance, not a very smart move. If you're a... Um, a business executive and you have to come give a meeting like I'm uh, or a presentation that I'm like I'm giving right now and you walk in without your notes uh, not a, not a very good idea okay that's that's being unprepared um, proper preparation prevents piss poor performance it's the five P's make sure that you're always prepared for any situation you know if you see it's raining outside you know and you're just leaving the house grab an umbrella it just makes sense you know, when I know it's going to be cold outside, you know, right now I'm currently in uh, the North Pole, which is also known as Wisconsin. You know, when I go to sneak out of the house, you know, I check the weather every single day. Is it going to snow? You know, I, I didn't know. I got, I got a truck in the car. I'll drive the truck if I know it's going to, you know, we're going to get six inches of snow. I'm going to drive the truck. If it's going to be negative 10, I'm not going outside without uh, wearing Under Armour and, you know, an extra coat, you know, and, uh, and, and loading up to make sure that I'm prepared for the day. You know, I get... Um, uh, every single day when I'm when I'm going out to do sales, I also want to make sure that I have change. I want to prepare for every single situation that's going to happen. If somebody comes up and says, "Hey, can you break a hundred? You know, <laughs> first thing I'm going to do is I'm trying to upsell. Absolutely, but let me show you this. Since you have a hundred dollar bill, we might as well do this. But uh, I want to have that change for that hundred, so I don't lose a sale because I was unprepared for that day. Number four is work a full eight hours. Okay. Um, honestly, when we think about it. Uh, whether you're a salesman or whether you're working at a regular job, let's just assume you work at a regular job. Do you really work a full eight hours? I mean, ask yourself that. A, an honest eight-hour day. Um, a lot of folks will say, yeah, but if you really break down your day, you go watch it. I mean, I'm talking about you got bathroom, lunch breaks, you got break, you know, times where your day isn't off. Uh, you know you know that thousand-yard stare where you're, if somebody came up and talked to you, they, they could talk to you for a good five minutes until they said, hey, Eric, you know, honestly, you never even heard a word they said. I do that when I'm watching TV and stuff. When we're doing sales, you know, I, I can I can honestly say I'm, I'm not the first person to do it, but I'm, I'm not going to be the last. I'm, I'm sure every salesman out there has went out one day, and I mean, for instance, the other day, I go out and, uh, you know, I make $200 in an hour and a half, and, um, you know, or when I'm selling roofing, I go out and, you know, and, and knock out, you make $1,000 in two hours, you know, and, uh, and and now you're like, man, I, I just made a 1000 bucks. I can go home for the day, I can just chill. You know, um, if you're if you're starting off that strong and you're that successful, which you know it happens, 
Um, a lot of salesmen will just go home for the day or they'll get lassadaisic, uh, they take a break, sometimes you might take a nap in the car. I mean, how many times in, as a salesman do you put an eight hour day? Uh, as a salesman, a lot of times um, you don't have to have uh, you don't have a boss by your side, you're more of that independent contractor slash 1099, you know, I work on my own, nobody's over my shoulder type thing. So you kind of get to do what you want. So you have to have self-motivation. Um, so going out for that full eight hours, if I can make, uh, let's say, let's just say 200 bucks. If I can make $200 every two hours, 100 bucks an hour. If I can make 100 bucks an hour, why would I work three hours and make 300 bucks if I can work eight hours and make 800? I mean, what would you rather make a day? 300 or 800? There's a lot of people that would that dream of making that kind of money, but, uh, you know, and that's in a sales career. Start thinking about that. How much time do you waste? You know, start tracking it. Pay attention, you know, and start dedicating to make sure I'm going to make, you know, uh, have an eight hour day every single day, at least, if, if not more. I mean, minimum of eight hours, though. So I'm not saying, hey, just work eight hours. If you can work a 10 hour day, terrific, but minimum eight hours and a real eight hours, okay? Number five is work your territory correctly. Okay, what I mean by this is when you do have a territory in the game of sales, whether you're doing business to business, whether you're doing uh, events, whether you're doing um, you know door to door sales, you know set yourself up for success. Uh, don't don't just bounce around territories. Okay, so let's just assume I have a hundred businesses in this area. You know, honestly, every single business that I go to, I want to track. Okay, okay, the owner's name's Jim. Okay, he has a wife named uh, um, Michelle, and also uh, you know three kids. You know, he said stop back by on Wednesday because you know his uh, his dog was sick, and you know, and his his, his wife was here, and da 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 da. I'm I'm writing that down. I'm not gonna forget about Jim. I need to go back to Jim. Hey, Amy next door at the uh, Smith Furniture there. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna stop by and see Amy on Tuesday the 13th. Now, if I go and I hit all these, these places and I don't write down who I'm supposed to talk to, when I'm going to come back, and I'm just kind of turning and burning, turning and burning, what will happen is those 100 businesses, I'll burn those up. I burn up 100 businesses in three, four, maybe five hours at most, and now I have to go to a whole new ter territory. Now, I might only talk to 35 people that I need to talk to. Now, I still have, so if we got 100 businesses, I only talk to 35 of them. So if you went and you did a test and you only got... 35% on your test in school, what grade would that be? So you left 65% of it laying on the table because you decided to go after that 135%. How many buyers do you think you left laying on your table? So make sure you work that territory correctly and you pull out every single dollar. We used to do an exercise in the office where you know, we'd have 30 guys around a circle, you know, and we'd take a sponge and we'd dip it in some water and we'd squeeze, the first the manager, he'd squeeze and squeeze and squeeze the sponge until there's no water left. And, and then he'd hold it up and he says, is this sponge empty? And everybody said, well, yeah. Do you agree? This sponge has no more water. Well, yeah. He handed it to the first guy. The, the first guy started squeezing and said, squeeze all the water you can out of it. Squeeze it, squeeze it, squeeze it. He says, now is the sponge empty? He's like, oh, everybody's like, absolutely. They hand it to the next person, next person, next person. Keep doing the same thing. And every single person in the entire loop, after everybody is ringing it where they can't get any more out of it, every single person would still ring some bit of water out of there. So understand that every single territory, whether you decide to take off out of it or not, it still has money laying on the, on the table. So would you want to be the person to collect that money, or you want to be the person to walk away from that money and let somebody else have it? Because if you're trying to hand out money, why don't you make sure you subscribe to my channel, shoot me over your email, and just ship me the money, and we could save you some time. You know, Don't waste all that time, because I'd love to have it. I'll take it right off your hands. Not a big deal, okay? Number six is maintain a positive attitude. Honestly, this is the most important one on the entire list. I, on my rankings that I do on this thing, it ranks higher than every single thing because if you have a crappy attitude, I can guarantee you this, you're not going to have a good day, okay? I don't care whether you're at a regular job, if you're at a sales job, if you're a CEO. I mean, when somebody has a negative attitude, first off, people don't want to be around them, okay? Um, I always like... Uh, I always, I always like using the example of the inside guy, how this guy's always, you know, smiling and walking around and um, always seem like the best attitude guy. Uh, that's, the smile, smiling is contagious. It's really hard to be pe mean to people that are, are smiling. If you walk through the mall right now and just, just smile like this, looking at everybody, people actually start breaking smiles and it, it becomes contagious. Your attitude, um, uh, letting your, getting down on your attitude is a, is a huge negative. Um, when you go out there and you believe uh, believe you can you can make things happen, you're going to. If you go out, let's just say I go out and do sales today, and I'm out and I'm out selling everybody. Um, 
to everybody, I've been out there three, four hours, and uh, I haven't taken a single yes. And pretty, you know, at first I started to tell, hey, what's going on? How are you? My name's Eric. We're doing this big promotion. Here's how it works. You know, and you can hear the vibrance in my voice as well as the, the voice fluctuation, the smile, you know, and it seems like I'm having a good time. Now, throughout the day after 35, 40 no's and three, four hours not selling anything, I, let's just assume that my attitude has dropped and dwindled down to just about uh, nothingness. And, you know, pretty soon my original pitch, uh, it goes down to this. Hey, what's going on? My name's Eric. Uh, we're doing this uh, really cool promotion. Let me show you how this thing works. As much as I'm trying to smile and fake it here, uh, something does change in your voice. And you can, you can actually, if somebody came in and, and uh, spoke to you, okay, could you tell if somebody was fake? I'm sure you've seen pictures. Uh, me and my wife were just talking about this the other day. She's got this picture where you just see this smile and you can tell that it wasn't a real smile. It's like, hey, you know, you, you seem to feel it look like they talk through their teeth, haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, terrific. I hope you shut up. Yeah, that. So, honestly, do you want to be that person that everybody looks at as fake? Do you want to buy from that person? You know, one of the things that I learned a long time ago when I was uh, doing sales is if I was to walk up and talk to myself, if somebody's come up and pitch me, what kind of attitude would they have to have? How would they view me? I mean, I took this to a whole nother level and started recording my, I started recording my pitch. I pitched myself in the mirror and I really studied this stuff and said, hey, is this somebody that I would buy from? Would you buy from someone that's fake, seem like they're having a rough day? Nobody wants to be the first or the last person to buy something. You know, uh, nobody wants to be the first person to get, uh, you know, duped or scammed or whatever it is and, you know, say, hey, I got the first one. Nobody wants to be the last because nobody wants to be left out, okay? So, if you aren't selling anything, okay, uh, people, they look at it and they don't think you've sold anything. If you look like you're having a bad day, nobody wants to buy from somebody having that bad day, okay? They want to buy from somebody that looks like they're just selling everything, Okay, they're just stuffs flying off the shelves, and they're like, "Oh my God, this is ridiculous! This is a ridiculous deal." You have that attitude, like, "This is phenomenal! You can't miss out." That attitude sells. It actually breeds a uh, sort of confidence. So make sure you capitalize on the uh, um, uh, the, the awesome attitude and, and, and roll with that. Okay. Number seven is know your goals. Okay, um, goals are super important. They say a person will almost double their income if they write their goals down over over their lifetime. Okay. Are you a person that does goals, okay? I mean, honestly, whenever I start a new year, I always write, write brand new goals. Every single year, I write brand new goals, and if I don't hit them all, I'll hit at least, you know, 80, 90% of them. And I mean, granted, I mean, I'm not excited if I eat 80, 90%, but would I hit, rather hit 80, 90% or just completely forget about them? I mean, who's really doing better, okay? So you can write, you got yearly goals, just like I just spoke with, about, um, number two, weekly goals. You know, write down what you want to do for a week. I don't care if it's grocery shopping, you know. Write it down. Start start holding yourself accountable. And holding yourself accountable, this, this is a real good place to put it. Write down eight or ten goals, whatever your goals are for the week. Whether, you know, you want to have some work goals, some home goals, stuff like that. Clean the house, some spring clean. I don't care what it is, but writing your goals down. If you hit your goals for the week, you know, go out to that movie. Go out and have a drink. Go out and have a steak dinner. You know, spend time with the loved ones and stuff. I mean, but... If you don't hit your goals, you know, honestly, you can't go out to eat. You can't go out on a Friday night. You can't have a good time that weekend because you, you didn't, you can't reward yourself for failures. Reward yourself for successes. If you hold yourself accountable like that, you'll always tend to hit your goals because you're fighting to be more successful. Never ever reward yourself for failures in your life. If you uh, reward yourself for the successes, your mind, in sub not only your mind, but your subconscious mind begins to train itself to say, I, I have to hit these goals, I have to be accountable, I have to make things happen. So start, start setting yourself up for success today by writing your goals and, um, and start knocking them dead and holding yourself accountable. Also, there are midterm goals, you know, where you're like three, four weeks or three, four months, you know, so um, start setting those up as well. But write them down. Just, just start it, you know. I mean, uh, you know, I'll do a video on just how to write goals, so look for that later on as well. And then last but not least, the eighth step is take control, okay. Take control of your destiny. Take control of your life. Um, you know, I've had a ton of salesmen come back. You know, I, I had a crappy day because of Jim. You know, Jim was over here, you know, doing this and that. You know, he went to the bathroom 19 times and, you know, he did this and he did that. And I'm like, I don't, who cares what Jim did? Honestly, do you, can you go tell your kids today, hey, listen, I'm sorry that I couldn't pay for your college tuition because Jim couldn't, 
Jim, Jim ate something bad and was in the bathroom all day. You know, hey, listen, I, I couldn't pay your college tuition because, you know, Jim's car broke down, and instead of me working, and I decided to stand around and watch Jim, you know, fix the car on the side of the street. You know, I mean, what what do you want to tell your family? I mean, how you know you got to take control. I mean, even in the sales game, when you're uh, when you're talking to people, um, a lot of folks they've been uh, told what to do their entire life. You know, hey, you know, honestly, when you're uh, when you're young, your parents tell you what to do. When you're in school, teachers tell you what to do. Go to college, you know, teachers tell you or professors tell you what to do. When you go to work, your boss tells you what to do. So honestly, when I'm doing sales, I wanna I'm telling people what to do. Um, honestly, hey, the package is only 30 bucks. If you just want to go grab your checkbook, I'll start writing out the receipt. I appreciate it. Okay, I want to take control of my, my day. I mean, I'm taking control of my destiny. A lot of people, um, uh, they'll say, hey, you know, the more successful I am, the more, the more luck people say that I have. This guy's so lucky. He's the luckiest guy. Da, da, da. Everything just goes your way. You know, and the one thing that I always found out, and my grandpa, he always agreed with me. He said this a lot, too. He said, you know what? The harder I work the luckier I get. So I'm one lucky SOB, you know. So uh, make sure that you're taking control every single day of your destiny. You decide how successful you want to be. I mean, you can make up all the excuses you want, but today, start making the, the right choices. Make those decisions. Don't let somebody else affect how good you do at work, how your home life goes, you know, how clean your house is. I mean, um, what, what, what do you do in your spare time? You start creating that direction. Start being a leader. Start uh, working that into your system. So, just to go one more time, have a winning attitude. Be on time. Be prepared. Work a full eight hours. Work your territory correctly. Maintain a positive attitude. Know your goals. And take control. If you do these eight steps, and you do them successfully every single time, I said, and watch my other videos, I'll show you a rating system so you can rank yourself on how to do this, you'll... You'll watch yourself uh, excel in any single career that you want to be in, as well as in your personal life. I hope this video helped out. Subscribe to my channel, and look out for the next video that uh, correlates with this one.